Tear Bear. Roxanne. I think before we talk about that thing, we need to talk about that thing. That thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know. I figured out that Meta, Facebook, Instagram has hired essentially anyone who like likes to just make a bunch of stuff and stick them against the wall. Like spaghetti, like spaghetti makers. Spaghetti on the wall. Yeah. And they've hired them and said, yes, you can change whatever you want, whenever you want. You can change it back. Doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. Go. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of feels like that. It does. Doesn't it? And as a result, we all just live in this wild world. What am I talking about? It's a wild, wild west. Um, So this happened, I guess, last week based on when we're recording, y'all. But when you're listening, it happened a little bit ago. Instagram changed their dimensions because a square just is not a square anymore. Mm-hmm. It needs to be more like a rectangle. Almost, what makes a rectangle? Like how much longer? Do the it's side like a be? long rectangle instead of like a horizontal. It's a vertical rectangle. rectangle instead of. But what makes a rectangle? Is it the second that it's just a tad longer? It's a rectangle, not a square. Yeah, yeah. Is that the rule? Because mm-hmm. okay. a square has to be perfect. All four that, sides are perfect. So if it's not, not perfect, it's a rectangle. Okay, could be a diamond. Just saying. I, it, it could be if that's what we want it. <laughs> but so when you're doing content or creating stuff, Instagram is long. I feel like Facebook got wider or they made it very blunt when you're in a group and you're like looking at pictures like it should be wider now. I'm like, ay, ay, ay. I think, yeah. So the dimensions, if you just want to write them down, are 1080 by 1350 or an aspect ratio of four to five. Mm-hmm. Sounds so Pinteresty. It does sound Pinterest. It gives me Pinterest sizing vibes. Well, and you know, Meta is all <laughs> about copying, not being the first to do anything. So that did I say that? Oh my gosh, no one's gonna hear this podcast now. We just got shut down. <laughs> we were shadow banned <laughs> everywhere. Listen, Zox, you can handle a little bit of criticism. No, you can't. No, you can't. It is what it is. It's a true story. So here we are. If you are in Social Templates Club or if you have purchased any of our social kits, fret not, my friends, because we have adjusted the dimensions. It's one of the beauty, mm-hmm. beautiful things about what we do. We stay up on all of the spaghetti on the wall. Mm-hmm. And when it actually applies to you as the direct seller, network marketer, social retailer, social marketer, we, attraction marketer, we actually make sure you've got what you need. There you go. Mm-hmm. We've got your back. We've got your back. And can we talk about what this week is right you now? Any, whatever you want, my darling. What do you want to talk about? It is Social Templates Club birthday week. And you know so, it because you gave us a shimmy. Oh, yeah. The shimmy is out in full force because it's so exciting. A whole year of templates have that. flown out to our people. <sighs> I did that. That's like, yeah, that feels really good. It feels Mm -hmm. really, really good. It's also a year. It's your anniversary. Yes. And by the way. Yes. This was like the first thing we like fully did together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Roxanne, slow down. We need to think about processes for this. How are we going to like do this consistently? And you're like, I already emailed it out. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) what? I already sold it. Oh, (laughs) some things haven't changed. (laughs) Hmm. I feel like we're in the same boat right now. Same boat, same boat. But it is so happy anniversary, Tear Bear, and happy tearing up my heart, and happy anniversary, Social Templates Club. It was last year sometime, was that 2021, where I was like, you know what? This is what network marketers need. They need templates that make it mm-hmm. easy. Not templates like, ooh, we look like everybody else, but templates that they can easily customize, but are really algorithm magnets and give them the ability to mm-hmm. showcase their hero product, their brand who they are, but look really polished and fantastic. And it's a year now. It's so exciting. So exciting. So if you are already in the club, we got you. There's going to be a little bonus in there. Mm -hmm. Bunch of cool story templates because we know that stories. I heard that one. It worked. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Keep going. We know how important stories are. So tons of story templates just float in your way. Mm -hmm. And then if you join social templates club this week, you also get that 
and you get the low price because you guys, we know how good this is. Mm-hmm. We know. And we are going to be adding caption templates. Whoop, 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 whoop. So with that, the price will be going up. So lock but you your price can, in now. Lock your price in now. You get the templates, you get the captions, you get the things. Everyone gets a thing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So there, there it is. So just know that it's juicy. It's wonderful coming your way. And remember if you are in uh, well, well, wait, wait, it's a birthday. I forgot what I'm huh. saying. No, oh yeah. If you're concerned about the change, I'm, I'm back. If you're, yeah. if you're concerned about the change, we've got you. Everything has been adjusted. So you're good to go. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good. All right. Now let's talk about the other thing. The other thing, thing, the attraction marketing thing. Oh boy. So, you know, what's really funny is over the last few years, I've heard people say Ooh, attraction marketing and attraction marketing is another way to basically say I'm a network marketer. Let's be real. That's what it is. It's, mm-hmm. it's code for, it's like, they don't know yet. The, the anti MLOers don't know yet. So they're like, Ooh, attraction marketing is something different. Mm-hmm. Um, should we start by what attraction marketing is not? Yes. Yeah. Run with that. So what, what is it not? It is not. Hey girl messages. It is not. It is not. This is not it. So if you think you're attraction, like you're doing attraction marketing by, well, it is not posting all about your product all the time on social media. That's not attracting anybody. And then it is also not Hey girl messages, which y'all, I think it's, very contagious lately in 2022, the, the Hey Girl messages are going around like wildfire. Check out my, my, uh, we'll put a link to that story, not story, the real, you can yeah. see one that just actually happened. And I just got one last night from someone who's like, I'm going to tell you about this one. Can I tell you about this one? Hey, yeah. It was, it was hello, Roxanne. It was not, Hey, hello, Roxanne. I saw we are both in the Peloton writers of SoCal group. Okay. okay. I know it's strange getting a message from someone you don't know yet, dot, 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 dot. But I'm very passionate about teaching people that care about their health, about this special water that is made from a medical device from Japan that you connect right to your own sink. It's called, and if you have it, I actually have it already. So it's really funny. They said it's called Kangen water and it's been life-changing for me. You drink that? I sure do. We'll talk about oh that gosh. later. It's okay. what, <laughs> it's what most of the top athletes like Tom Brady, Steph Curry, the Lakers, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and so many more have known about for years. If I were to send you a couple super short videos that explain all about it, would you watch them? Complete stranger. Crash. Into the garbage. Delete. I am not even active in the Peloton Rider with SoCal Group. We have never, like, complete stranger. No, I did say, I'm like, hey, so and so, brave to send, it was a guy, brave to send a cold message these days as a direct seller. I actually coach direct sellers how to grow without the, and I put in quotes, hey, girl messages. I believe they do more damage than good individually and as an industry as, whole, as a whole. Just food for thought. At any rate, I have a Kangen and I use it daily. How do I respond to that? So nice, did he, re- right? did he, it is great. Did he respond back? He did. He said, awesome. And thanks for the great advice. Um, okay. He said, and thanks for the advice. That's great though. And then he said, glad you are Kanganized. Thanks for the response. And I thumbs up and I said, absolutely. Best of luck with your business. Okay. There Good. Is. Oh, we yeah. have. And no. Pearson, by the way, just in case you don't know Kangen, that's an expensive piece of equipment. He's trying to cold call me and message about. I don't know him. I would not mm. trust him. Like you did stop with it. That is not attraction marketing. Nothing was attractive about that. And nothing attraction marketing is like pulling me to, to you. Now, the other thing I think we need to say about attraction marketing, because the biggest thing I hear people get com- complaints about is, well, yeah, you sit there and you're like, oh, my, my collagen is so amazing. It's so good. But you won't actually tell us what it is. People get annoyed. Tell us what the thing is. Mm-hmm. They get annoyed that, oh, if you want to know, DM me, I'm not going to tell you what it is. That also frustrates people. And I get that. I hear that. They feel like it's a little cloak and dagger. Think about attraction marketing. Well, how would you describe attraction marketing? Lovely one. So the way I, I guess, would describe it is 
in the realms of using social media, it's you're putting out content that's educational, that's valuable, that people want to come and look at. They want to hang out on your profile. They want to look at your stories every day. And then you start, you know, in your content plan, you do talk about the product. And then that piques their curiosity where they reach out to you and say, hey, girl, saw your story on collagen. I want some Uh instead of you DMing them and being weird. Yes. That's how I think of it. Absolutely. And it's a strategy, y'all. It is not overnight. And that's the problem. I think that's the big problem. We have this, we need it right now. And it goes back to the podcast we did recently about like, about thinking that there's not enough to go around living in a lack or scarcity mindset, which means we have to have it all right now. So I have to mm-hmm. reach out to, to like a thousand people right now. And we don't think about the fact that even if you reach out to a thousand, you get three people who say yes. How many people said no? Cause you turn them away. You turn them off because of just that ah, antsy in your pantsy, like aggressive agro marketing. We should call mm-hmm. it agro marketing. Say no to agro marketing and like attraction yeah. marketing, like you said, is exact is setting up that strategy. So when you're talking to, like when you're putting things out on social, it is a, like letting people know who you are as a human. Mm-hmm. They can be drawn to you and attracted to you in that way. Mm-hmm. And you are gaining credibility in life with them. So that when you do talk about a product that you like, which you're not doing every day, all day, they then appreciate and want to know more about what you have to offer or the transformation that you've had. Exactly. Exactly. I did a version of this yesterday on my account where like I did a reel that showed my personality, showed kind of my journey. And then in the caption, I kind of teased about like, and I'm going to be having a new offer. I got messages. People DM'd me about it. So guess what? I wasn't weird about it. I didn't reach out to those people and ask them like, so there is some lessons to learn, I guess, from like traditional marketing too. Granted, I'm not selling it like a product, Mm -hmm. but there is some carryover. Like I wouldn't sell my product like that or my service like that. So why are you doing it in network marketing too? Very good question. It is, it is weird and you are not McDonald's. You're not on every corner. You're not Starbucks, which by the way, is closing down a bunch of stores. Did you see that? Yeah. I saw the link. I didn't click on it to read. I I was like, huh, like Starbucks, what's going on there? Um, it also is. And the funny thing is we teach it in social stories. Mm -hmm. Well, you knew that I didn't have to tell you that you're like, thank you, Captain Obvious. You're welcome. (laughs) For those listening who don't know, because we don't, I feel like we don't call it attraction marketing. So maybe people think it's something else, but guess what? That's what we teach. It's attraction marketing. You're attracting people to your storefront. They want to come in and shop. They're not just window shopping. Come on in. (laughs) And at different points in time, they're going to purchase, which means join you in business or buy your product. That's how it works. You know, it's funny. I was um, meeting with my pod people, my pro pod um, mm-hmm. social stories. We were having our laser coaching end of the month um, calls this week. And it was really exciting because one of the big projects that we've been working on together was really getting juicy lead gens out of them and setting up the whole, all the steps, which takes mm-hmm. time. It takes time. And they were all feeling really, really good. They'll all be done with it by tomorrow. And they're all feeling really, really good. But some of them are done already. And Elizabeth Ann, so I said, okay, y'all, now that it's done and we have the entire, like you've got the welcome series, all those things. So people come, the biggest mistake people make at that point is they feel like, okay, I made it. And they believe this, if you build it, will come nonsense, which Mm -hmm. is not a thing. That's the thing in the movies. Kevin Costner maybe never saw it, filled dreams. But- it's not reality. You have to remind people that it's out there. You have to tell people it's out there. And mm-hmm. that's part of the attraction marketing strategy where it's not necessarily, hey, come buy my product, but here's this amazing lead gen. Here's this amazing piece of valuable content, like you were saying earlier, Taryn, that you can get. And then that also gives you an ability to cultivate that relationship. And yeah. Lizanne was saying, because hers is done. She was like, I just posted something like she said, it's made my call to actions different. And she was said that today she had posted something with a call to action to it. And she said, I got two new people on my two new people. She's like, and I, I get about, I think she said she gets about 
30 a, a month. And then she said, she's like, I know that seems like small potatoes. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Mm-mm. What network marketer wouldn't love to have 30 strangers get on their list a month? Yeah. Yeah. And then you let your emails do the work for you. You're not sending hey girl messages. You're sending them emails and you're top of mind, you know? And they're not and hey girl emails either. <laughs> they're not hey girl emails. <laughs> it's not allowed there either. It's or not in the mail. allowed. Yes. But this has me thinking about what we were talking about before we started recording is there's two types of buyers out there. Break it down. And I feel like, hey, girl messages are trying to talk to the buyer that is a hair, a hair meaning a rabbit that's fast. Like the jackrabbit. Did you ever see that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not hair. Did you ever like the jackrabbit? Like I think of sex in the city and the jackrabbit, but carry on. Oh, I don't know that part. I've watched all those. Just think episodes. what a jackrabbit does. Most. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Get it. Or yes. a jackhammer. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Keep yes. <laughs> so it's fast. They buy instantly. Like they wham, you pop bam, up in bam, their bam. inbox. Yes. And they purchase. Boom. Most people are not like that. That's why hey girl messages don't always work. They never work. Jeez. They work enough for people to keep doing them, unfortunately. Right. But they do more are- damage. There are hairs out there. Like I'm a hair. I'm a quick purchaser. Like I make my mind and I buy it. It's just because she said that y'all don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. I don't purchase like that. No, I anyways. And then there's also tortoises. So they need to be educated. They need to be reminded who you are. They maybe need to see your content 17 times. I know Mm -hmm. that sounds exhausting, but honey, they need some warm cuddles. They need to be taken on a date before they purchase. So just because they didn't purchase on your first post or on your first conversation with them does not mean they're not going to purchase. Correct. They need romance. They need to be wined and dined. They do. So I was in my little like HD coaching pod that I'm in as like a, a Something yeah. that someone said, what I think is so powerful is this. When you are posting something, I'm going to put it in the context of a network record. When you're posting something that's out there, just because you don't necessarily see the sales immediately does not mean you didn't convert that hair or that tortoise, excuse me. That tortoise mm-hmm. may be converted and they're like, all right, I'm walking slowly to my credit card or to the button. <laughs> and so like, it takes them time. It doesn't mean that what you posted was a failure. It just means that it takes them more time. So know that you have given them what they need. They just have to get their ducks in a row. They're slow. It takes them a while to get to that, that finish line to get it. And if we remember Mm -hmm. that, gosh, we'd be, we wouldn't be running around trying to find the jackhammers. Cause you know what the hairs, the jackhammers do the jackrabbits. They're a little destructive sometimes too, right? Like if you are trying to, it's like a jackhammer messes up everything. It's loud and it messes everything up. Right. They, they come in fast, they purchase, and then they do not sign up for your reoccurring program because they're like, it didn't work. (laughs) Yeah. You know, that is, go. that is a good point because they're so quick that they weren't, mm-hmm. they weren't convinced or converted fully to begin with. And so they don't necessarily understand that the transformation is going to take them time. The transformation mm-hmm. being, I joined the business. And I thought I'd make a million dollars immediately or at all, or mm-hmm. I thought I would use this product once and I would see it. I would look 20 years younger. Why don't I, why aren't my lashes like really, really long, like tarantulas. They don't, they don't get it. <laughs> I've always said I want lashes. They're like, give me like spiders. Like I used to, yeah. You got flies in there. <laughs> not flies. Not, I'm like spiders, not flies. Um, yeah. I know, but the, the fly got caught in the leg. <laughs> get it? Cause it's legs, spider legs. So it, gross. It got, you're the one who's talking about spider no, legs it, on your it, eyes. It's a term. It, okay, fine. Whatever. Uh, on to the next example. <laughs> Crisscross will make a jump jump. I'm just going to go back there for a second. <laughs> um, no. Yes. So that's something to definitely remember. There's one other thing and I totally lost. It. It'll come back to me another day, but we just have to remember that it does take, oh, 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 it was there and then it was gone. Then it's gone. Okay. Maybe I won't look at you. You think that's what it was? <laughs> it was, you said you were talking about the two type of buyers. Oh, I want one other story I want to tell you. True story. So I w- wasn't able to sleep the last a week or so. I think it's because I was just, my green, my green compass, the gummies were jellies. I never get it right. But my CBD 
yep. she thinks from Green Campus. I was off just slightly because so I was waiting for them to come and I think it really did make me stay up. So this is why I'm telling you this. I was like on, you know, because you're getting all sorts of messages from me like 3 a.m. So I had was looking on Facebook and I saw a, a message from a friend that I, a woman that I was friends with. You know, you're friends where you lose touch with them, but you know, like you'd pick it up and you, yeah, everything would be great. She and her husband, we were all in the same like young professionals church group back when I was in Austin. And so I saw her message and it was a post about how her son was getting his stint out and how his cancer treatments were going to be over in like two months. I'm like, what? So then I start mm-hmm. doing the deep dive and apparently mm-hmm. her second son, he's maybe seven, eight, maybe six had cancer, leukemia, and he was diagnosed in 2020. She's been posting that journey for two years on Facebook. Facebook has decided to never show that to me. I mm-hmm. never saw it. Um, it's not like her posts weren't algorithm. Like uh, people were commenting on it. Lots yeah. of comments, and I just never knew. And I was just like, so I went through and then I messaged her and I was like, I, first of all, like, you know, I just sent her all the love and all the things and was yeah. like, sorry, I did not know. And it was, I said, you know, it was kind of interesting. She said, I thought I saw you a few days ago in a crowd. She said, I ran after this woman <laughs> thinking it was you and she heard, and it wasn't. I was like, we were meant to like Aww. connect. So it's, it, there was no like love loss in any way. It's not like I had, had said, Hey, I don't want to see your messages. Like to, you know, cause you can do that on Facebook. Literally she'd been talking about something for two years and I never saw it. And I tell you yeah. that because we get frustrated or think I'm talking about all these things and it's not happening. It took me two years to even see what was going on in her life. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, y'all, we have to remember that this marketing thing takes time and you have to nourish it and and you have to to remember that and nurture it. So anyhow, I just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. Well, that just made me feel very sad. I know. I know. I know. That's like, mm, mm. yeah. Yeah. My heart. Boy. So all that to say, like, even I have like an example I'm thinking about because I usually purchase pretty fast, but there was this one person I followed for a year before I purchased from her. It just needed that long. Like sometimes I am a little tortoisey, I guess, or it just, it, it wasn't even tortoisey. Like I knew I wanted to buy it. It just wasn't the right timing. Mm-hmm. I was like, if I buy this now, I'm not going to use it. Right. I have to wait for other things to change. And this was a business purchase. So it was like, I just need to, I'm not ready for it yet. So someone might not be ready yet. If you're selling a weight loss product, maybe they're like, gosh, I'm trying to get through the summer. I'm going to eat all the nummies Mm -hmm. and I'll be back to you in the fall. (laughs) I'll be back after the nummies are gone. (laughs) Yes. That's what we call them in our house is nummies. (laughs) I guess so. Now I know. Now we know. So that's a little tidbit for y'all, giving you some just just some reflection points on attraction marketing. It's if you have questions for us, it's what we do. This is, this is our life, attraction marketing and bringing in social into it. So just holler, holla, um, holla at us, holla at us, but don't be too loud when you holler. Holler sounds like it's like loud. Holler not er, but holla with an a, which is like hey girl, but not hey girl because we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the nice kind of hey girl where you're like hey girl I just want to chat yeah 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 exactly <laughs> not so a going weird on with you mm. behind the scenes my dear mm, yeah I got my nails done after four weeks they were looking was, bad on social I don't mind telling you oh they were bad and I like if I could have taken them off myself I would have like I contemplated I'm like am I gonna soak these babies in acetone for an hour and get them off I didn't. You don't have an hour to soak your fingers and, and that no. even happened. I did it once. And then I realized how long it takes like at home versus I feel like at the nail salon, it takes like two seconds. I'm like, so I'm like at home trying to do it. No, I can't have my fingers in that while my kids oh. are destroying my house. What are you like you're, you, it wouldn't even happen. So. Yeah. So got that done. I feel like a new woman. And this tomorrow, actually, I am throwing a birthday party for my mom and my cousin. What? Yeah, I know. I didn't even really tell you. I spent so much money at the grocery store. I'm we're doing homemade lasagna, Caesar salad, bread for sixteen people. So, wow. do you know that you have a celebration about every month? Did you know that? It feels like it. Go back and look. You have a celebration every month. 
Well, we had two this week because I also had one Sunday. Jeremy's grandma turned 86. So we oh. all went out to, it's called the Polish Union. It's like one of those clubs and had a beer with grandma. That's so sweet. Happy birthday, grandma. Mm-hmm. I saw that on social. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I posted it. Mm-hmm. So lots of just celebrating. You're right. We celebrate a lot. You do. I like it. You do. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, your turn. Baylor pooped. <laughs> she did? How come I, maybe you did message me somewhere oh, and I haven't seen it yet. I posted it yesterday. She pooped <sighs> after like many. So y'all, she was not feeling well. Yes. Last week took her to the vet. They did x-rays and the girl was backed up. I showed my oh. sister and she was like, oh my gosh, girl was back. She's 2.8 pounds. I don't know where she's putting all that poop, but it wasn't coming out. Um, And so they said pumpkin, but then I heard pumpkin was bad. Like all these things went through all these things. Yeah. But her, like my, my real vet is my good friend, Kelly, who lives in Austin where we were and is, mm-hmm. is her OG vet. And she was like, um, go ahead and do Miralax. You can use Miralax on dogs, believe it or not. So I was sprinkling it. Yeah. She pooped. That was Friday. She pooped Sunday morning. That was still when it was pumpkin. Then she didn't poop again till I want to say Monday afternoon after I walked her around the house because she doesn't walk outside so I literally put on her harness she does walked her around the living room over and she's like stop it I'm like she looked like she was not having that she's she like oh so annoyed at one point uh, like, trying to make herself five pounds and I'm like I will drag you we have to keep moving darling <laughs> the harness wouldn't hurt her um and so then we upped the dose of Miralax and sure enough yesterday morning 3 57 in the morning she was Scott was up getting ready to go to the gym I was in bed with Baylor and she came to the, went to the edge of the bed and I put her down and she went over there and so I could kind of see her like on the potty pad and she started doing her thing and then Scott comes in of course through the other door in the bathroom and goes whoa and I'm like please do no. not disturb let her do it let her do it for two days <laughs> And, uh, it was, a, I'm just going to tell you, it was the length of Baylor and Baylor does not have a docked tail. So her tail, like, it was the length. I mean, it was all around and different, but if you put it all together, length of Baylor. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't need the full graphic view of this, but. Says the woman who puts actual poop on her story. I don't want to hear it from you, Missy. I do not want to hear it. <laughs> I can dog poop. Not oh, human poop. Was, I don't well, know if that was dog or human poop. I, that was your daughter's poop, wasn't it? No, it was Stella, our dog. Oh, okay. I but it could have been Maddie because we are potty training right now. So I, there's a lot of poop to go around. I told Scott it was Maddie's. He was like, girl, I'm like, she's learning. <laughs> no, it was Stella. We went outside. I asked her if she wanted to come. She is an old senile lady now. So she wanted to stay inside. And we have pee pads down because if we go in the other room without her, she's peeing somewhere. So there was pee on the pad and there was also a turd in the living room. Not on the pad. I thought that was Maddie. <laughs> that is so I'm funny. I'm glad you found it before Maddie did. It's like, what's this? So that was probably a good thing. Yeah. So yes, poop has happened. That's the big story here. And then I'm getting ready to go on the road again here pretty soon. On the Where road you going? Again. I am going to St. Charles, Missouri. So okay. if you're the traveling vineyard, I'll see you there. Then I'm going, Scott and I have a vacation. We planned e- eons ago to Vegas. You guys are going? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought you were canceling. Enough. We were, but I left it because, you know, he's an emotional authority. So I didn't really pay attention yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's back on. And so we're going, okay. and then I'm going to Vancouver. So I'll go up to Vancouver to Penny World at the end of August. So like, boom, nice. Boom. They're pretty back to back. So yeah. Yeah. How so, fun. Maybe we'll get a in the bed podcast guys. Stay tuned. That looks so ridiculous. <laughs> you know, the next time you do it, I'm going to be in the bed. You should. I'll message you like I'm in the bed. Like, I was like, <laughs> That's what I looked like when it's what I was. <laughs> I'm just like, <sighs> hey, let's talk. That was a real talk. We just had a pillow talk. We pillow had pillow talk. Uh, yeah. I don't even know where I was. Was that Adlena? I can't keep track of you. Aaron, tear bear, tearing up my heart. And crisscross was, yeah. was okay. Y'all he wasn't great. He was okay, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. He had his backup singer singing a lot of it. And I, I, I mm-hmm. could be the backup singer. Hello. I didn't need that. And 
the order of the songs weren't what we would have wanted them to be. He should have started uh, with, um, and I got such a long way to go, such a long way to go. I don't know. You don't know that one, but he okay. sang sailing like halfway through. I'm like, I could go home now. What are you doing? Don't do yeah. your biggest song at, anyhow, but it was, it was good. And it was fun to go out there, but still. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. We'll go to that venue one more time for sure. This concert series season. And we're going to see, I'm going to test you. Billy Ocean. No. See, my dad listens to a ton of old music, but not what you listen to. So I feel like I'm more educated in like hair bands. Oh, yeah. I bet your dad knows who Christopher Cross is. Ask him. Betty oh, he, he probably does. Yeah. He, yeah. he my dad knows. Did Everything. you just say that? I don't want to, but I'm just trying to get this. Like, let me just, no, my dad's way older than you. Okay. All right. Which is it's okay for the same age, but I got range when it comes to me. I'm just saying like, yes, he also listens to, he doesn't listen to anything now. So I'm like, I thought I would be a little bit more educated and he it's letting me down, but he usually likes to listen to stuff that I feel like isn't mainstream. Like hmm. his favorite band is cheap trick. Do you know them? Oh yeah, of course loves them like hold his on whole their best song trick. was on monster ballads i know y'all you're like are we still here talking we are um <sighs> never surrender just a little more time is all we're asking for that's cheap trick no and when the night is it scott cheap trick sings what flame. the flame the flame. What's there? Oh, I want you to want me. There you go. I need. Then, I was thinking. Yeah, they sing. I thought they they sing, they sing a surrender song. Not never. But, oh, yeah. they go surrender, surrender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right, you guys are you're back in. You're back in. We're back in. Scott, you missed the shimmy. You missed the shimmy, darling. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> watch the podcast episode. Have to watch the episode. <laughs> All right. It's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> Scott's walked in here. We're singing. If you're still listening, thank you. One more thing. Important. Want to shout out to the, do you want to know what city is like our most, for the last five episodes, they've been listening more than anybody else? Natural. Yeah. Again, I didn't ask you. I don't know if y'all can hear him. <laughs> um, is it Nashville? <laughs> It is not Nashville. It is Hilliard, Ohio. Oh, thank you. We don't, we don't say the O word. Listen, Ohio. listen. We're, you, you have to, we're Michigan fans, but if you're listening in Hilliard, Ohio, yes. we still appreciate you. And thank you so much for listening. Wyndham, Minnesota is popular, man. They are listening. Oh. Shreveport, Louisiana. All right, let me get nice. one that's all, oh, Muskegon, Michigan. You've been listening. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, I see that. I see that. You're not the most popular, but I just saw it, and that's where you're, you are. So, Mallorytown Landing, Ontario. Thank you for listening. Yeah. And Sunshine Coast, Queensland, and Perth, West Australia. Thank you for listening to the podcast, y'all. <laughs> Perth. I love it. If you heard your city, go ahead and tag us at rocks talks on your story and we have something special for you mm -hmm. all right we gotta go we gotta go we'll see you next week bye y'all take care bye bye